Hey, and welcome to the first short lecture from Chapter 8 in your textbook. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about listening. So listening is, of course, one of the most important components in communication. It's one that we don't think about a whole lot. Indeed, we spend more time listening to other people than in any other form of communication. There have been plenty of studies that have, that have looked into the role of listening uh, as a component in communication. And we found, for example, that at work, employees at Fortune 500 companies spend more than half their time listening. For college students like yourselves, studies have been done that show that you spend about 11% of your time writing, 16% speaking, 17% reading, and 55% of your time listening. Now, with listening, we, we understand that it's a key element in relational satisfaction. So what does that mean? Well, let's unpack that a little bit. What that means is that people who have partners that listen and, and who likewise listen to their partners generally have happier and longer lasting relationships. Adults rank listening as one of the most important communication skills in family and social situations. And in general, uh, people, grown-ups with jobs, say that listening is the most common form of nonverbal communication uh, that they see in their workplace. So all of this indicates, right, that, that when it comes to getting along with people, when it comes to sustaining healthy and positive relationships, that listening really plays a key role. Indeed, we know that marriage counselors say that failing to take another person's perspective when listening, so, so in other words, not putting yourself in that other person's shoes and, and really listening, uh, is one of the most frequently encountered complaints. So I, I'm, what I'm trying to do here, of course, is stress to you, again, the importance of listening in terms of relational satisfaction and in terms of your ability to get along with others. We, we see the desire to be listened to throughout our society in ways that are so common that perhaps we don't really notice them, right? So, uh, for example, you might, might have someone say, uh, you know, I, I, I just want to be heard, right? Or uh, I want my day in court. In both of these instances, what they're really saying is that they want someone to, to listen to, to what they have to say. Um, you know, you probably had a significant other or spouse tell you at, at some point, oh, you just don't listen to me, right? Uh, again, this is, points to how important this listening component is in, in the overall process of communication and in our relationships with others. Now, it's important to understand that, that listening and hearing are not the same thing. Listening, in fact, is, is quite different than just hearing. When you listen, you're making sense of another person's messages. It's more than just receiving those messages, right? So what, if you're just hearing something or someone, what's happening is you have sound waves striking your eardrum, and these cause vibrations uh, that are then... Uh, transferred to your brain, transmitted to your brain via, uh, you know, electronic uh, stimuli, right? Uh, I mean, anybody, uh, provided you're not deaf, uh, can hear, right? Listening, however, is when you make sense of these impulses that your brain is getting and give meaning to the messages that you receive. So really, we could say that, that listening and hearing are different because hearing you do all the time right? You, you hear all kinds of things, but you don't necessarily listen to them. When we listen to, to a message, we make sense out of it. It's meaning making, right? Listening is meaning making. So to put it real simply, you're listening uh, when you hear a message and then make sense of it. Now, within the context of listening, we can divide it up into, into a couple different kinds under uh, the aegis of what we call dual process theory. So dual process theory suggests that we process information in two very distinct ways. There's mindless listening, which occurs when we react to others' messages automatically without much mental investment. You know, so if you're, if you're mindless listening to someone, that's when you're like, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, right, yeah, and, and you're, you're just sort of acknowledging what's going on, you're making sense of the message, but you're not spending a lot of time on it. 
Mindful listening, however, involves giving careful and thoughtful attention as well as response to the messages that we receive, right? So, so mindful listening is, is when you really try and, and engage with the messages that you're receiving and, and you really consider them. You really sit down and think about what the other person or what the other people are saying to you. Now, interestingly, we, we have a whole bunch of studies that show that people who are good at listening do really well at work, right? We know that people with good listening skills generally rise higher in the organizations they're in, so they get promoted. We know that human resources executives rank listening effectively at the top of their skills for effective managers. Now, this shouldn't really come as a surprise, right? Uh, many of you, as you go out into the workplace, are hoping to be middle managers, right? You're not going to be at the very bottom, and you're not going to be at the very top, right? You're not going to start as a CEO, but you're probably not going to start at the lowest level either with a, with a solid college education. As a result, you get put in the middle. And people in ma middle management have to listen a lot. Middle management is all about listening to the messages that come down from on high, from, from, the, from the chief executive and so on, as well as the team that's working for you, right? You have to be able to listen to both. Now, one of the problems is that we all think that we're better at listening than we really are. So, for example, when they surveyed managers, 94% of them ranked themselves as good or very good listeners. Now, this statistically simply can't be the case, because in reality, right, we can't avoid this, at least 50% have to be just average, because that's what average means. So, as a result, 94% of us can't be good or very good listeners. All right, so that does it for this short lecture, and the next one we'll talk about elements in the listening process. Thanks for checking this out.